Welcome to the final edition of the Austin Capital Update. I hope you've enjoyed these weekly updates from the lobby staff of Texas Farm Bureau on what's been going on at the Capitol in Austin. Now that the session has been completed and the veto period is over, we're able to look back on the session and see where we had some successes and where we came up short on a few issues. Uh, the Department of Agriculture sunset process was very successful. Uh, much of that is a reflection on former Senator Todd Staples as the commissioner, the goodwill that he has, and the good work that he has been doing. There was the changes made in the Young Farmer and Rancher Loan Guarantee Program that will benefit young producers. There were changes made in the prescribed burn board authority to make sure that landowners and their managers can have some safety and some certification. There was also a very important change made in livestock management practices for those individuals who are near cities. A uh, change put in that makes clear that cities and counties do not have the authority to regulate those livestock management practices. Eminent Domain Reform was our top priority of this session. Farm Bureau worked to reestablish a requirement that good faith negotiations to purchase land precede condemnation including attorney's fees and expert fees if the condemning entity does not negotiate in good faith. In conjunction with this priority, we supported legislation to give landowners adequate compensation in the condemnation process. We were partly successful in this effort. HJR 14 by Representative Court is a constitutional amendment that will be voted on in November's ballot. This is a good amendment that helps property owners because it limits what property can be taken by eminent domain. Senate Bill 18 by Senator Estes was a comprehensive eminent domain reform bill that we really needed to pass. Unfortunately, it did not. It included good faith negotiations and compensation for property owners. We must keep this issue alive for next session and get this passed to truly help property owners who face this ordeal. Another priority was to support sunset review of eminent domain authority. Senate Bill 1253 by Senator Selinger was a bill that did just that. It repealed the provision that was added last session that would have allowed water marketers such as T. Boone Pickens to use a freshwater supply district to condemn right away for electronic transmission lines. Another bill I'd like to mention is House Bill 768 by Representative Colthorst. This bill did away with a jury of view eminent domain process. This allowed county commissioners to select a number of people to designate county roads. This did away with that process, so they must go through the official eminent domain process, which gives more protection to property owners. This session, the Texas Farm Bureau had two main priorities with regards to water. First, to ensure that groundwater conservation districts continue to be the main entity in the state of Texas that regulates groundwater and uh, we were successful in accomplishing that priority. There were several pieces of legislation filed to try to take control away from groundwater districts and to move that control to the state level and uh, we were successful in defeating those pieces of legislation. Uh, our other priority dealt actually with surface water and under surface water uh, our priority was to ensure that rural areas supplies of surface water from their rivers and reservoirs were protected and there actually were no pieces of legislation filed this session that uh, attempted to take any of that water and move it to urban areas which is unusual because in past sessions we've always seen legislation to do that. One important change in the tax area was on the state margins tax. In the past a business became subject to the margins tax when they had over three hundred thousand dollars in income. Uh, that floor was changed this year to $1 million. That should provide some relief for some of those small businesses and growing businesses. There were three major transportation policy priorities established by the Texas Farm Bureau for the 81st regular session of the legislature. The first and foremost was to repeal the Trans-Texas Corridor. The second was for better accountability at the Transportation Commission and the Department of Transportation. And lastly, better funding sources for our road systems across the state. Regarding the repeal of the corridor, HB 11 was sponsored by Representative David Leibowitz from San Antonio. This would have repealed Chapter 227 of the Transportation Code, which authorized the state to acquire land, 
construct the project, maintain, operate, finance, et cetera, the mass transportation project known as Trans-Texas Corridor, which would have been the multimodal utility road, freight, et cetera, project that would connect the state from the southern tip up to the northern tip. Also, HB 300, which was the TxDOT Sunset Bill, included that same language. Unfortunately, each of those bills did not pass. HB 11 was heard in the House Transportation Committee. President Dershke came to testify before the committee back in April. With regard to HB 300, it was caught up at the end of the session through a couple of different political battles, which unfortunately did not allow it to have a final vote by both the House and the Senate. Regarding the accountability priority, Senator John Corona from Dallas authored SB 1351. This bill would have reduced the term limits for the existing five-member transportation commissioners from six years down to two years. Unfortunately, that bill did not make it through the entire legislative process either. Back to HB 300, another component of that sunset bill included the reauthorization of the Texas Department of Transportation for another four years. And lastly, it would have maintained the existing five-member appointed transportation commission. Again, Farm Bureau supported these priorities and these components of that bill, but unfortunately it did not pass. Lastly, Texas Farm Bureau supported better funding sources for the road construction projects and infrastructure requirements around our state. With that regard, Senator John Corona also introduced SB 263. That would have been the enabling legislation required for the state to distribute bonds that were authorized in 2007 by voters for the different road construction projects in the state. Unfortunately, it did not make it through the entire legislative process during the regular session. However, that was one of the three issues assigned by the governor to the legislature for them to address during the two-day special legislative session that happened in early July. This bill did pass and now that funding source can be used and the bonds can be sold and can be operated around the state so that road construction projects are able to continue. As a final message to our Farm Bureau members across the state, I want to remind them that our transportation issues still remain a priority. We weren't able to accomplish in totality everything that we set out to do this session. In particular, the repeal of the Trans-Texas Corridor. This is very important to landowners across the state and it's important that our Farm Bureau members are, meet with their local legislators and remind them that this is an issue that needs to be settled during the 2011 legislative session. Another priority of Texas Farm Bureau was to oppose legislation that gives any governmental entity unreasonable land use authority. There were a number of bills this session that did exactly that. We were fortunate that we were able to stop these bills and not allow them to pass so that we could protect our property owners from any unreasonable land use authority. One bill that I would like to mention is House Bill 2919 by Representative Susan King. Military bases are concerned that if there's growth around those bases, it'll interfere with the operation of them. They attempted early on in the session to regulate the, the land around these bases up to five miles out. We were able to negotiate with them to not allow that regulation so that it's only a advisory committee and not actually a committee that has regulator regulatory authority in order to protect agricultural property owners around these bases. Texas Farm Bureau had several priorities with regards to the state budget. Uh, we had some programs that needed some additional funding such as boil eradication, flood control dams, wildfire protection, and fortunately we were able to uh, convince the legislature to provide that additional funding for those programs. In all, uh, agricultural programs received an additional $52 million from the legislature this session, so that's outstanding, including $20 million for boll weevil eradication, of course, which is very important considering uh, that cotton is the number one cash crop in the state of Texas. We're able to establish the Equine Incentive Program to help the Texas horse industry. The program will be self-funded through a checkoff mechanism because we were not able to secure passage of the video lottery terminals at racetracks.